What's up everyone, welcome to another video. In this video, I'll make an ant farm out of a couple of glass jars. It's easy to make, and for me, it was enjoyable to make and entertaining to watch evolve over time. You're never too old to enjoy an ant farm. I try to post a variety of videos and work in some fun ones for you. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe for more how-to and review videos. Also, please forgive anything out of the ordinary with my voice. I'm currently feeling a little under the weather, but I'm still doing my best to make a video for you. Now, let's get started. To get started, you just need a couple of glass jars. Here are a few that I have been setting aside in anticipation of building an ant farm soon. What's needed is a smaller jar that will fit inside of a larger jar. These two will work well. Next, remove the labels from the jars. Looks like I already cleaned up the big jar. Let's take care of the little jar. I'll start out by scraping off all the paper, but we'll still be stuck with the glue. This label glue can be a real hassle. One tip is to use brake cleaner to remove the glue. It usually takes the glue right off. Otherwise, if you fool around with hot water or scrapers, it just moves the glue around, but doesn't get it off. Next, wash and rinse the jars thoroughly, so they are clean of contaminants, so the ants can live in them safely. Now it's time for some dirt. I have some over here. Insert the small jar centered inside the large jar. This will result with no dirt in the center, which will force the ants to dig their tunnels around the outside, where you can see them. Don't fill it too high, maybe three quarters high. We need a void at the top, so the ants have a place to put loose dirt as they dig. This is probably a little too high. I'll remove some before I put in the ants. I dig it. Next, to prepare, punch some small holes in the lid of the jar, so the ants will have fresh air. Make sure to keep them small, so the ants cannot fit through the holes. This looks pretty good. Now, it's time to collect some ants. I've got a couple options. Here are some very small ants. I believe they're called pavement ants. Here they are, next to a United States dime, for a sense of scale. And here's a larger ant, again, next to a dime for scale. I believe it's a carpenter ant. If I got these ants wrong, just let me know in the comments. I'm going with these guys. Here's a nest. There are plenty of them. Gathering enough shouldn't be a problem. There's a couple ways to go about it. For example, here's another jar, and I put a piece of fruit in it. Then I let it sit for about a half hour, so the ants could congregate. And a half hour later, there's a good group of ants in there. So I put on the lid. These look like some motivated ants full of energy and ready to dig tunnels. Then I introduce them into the ant farm. If you're up for it, and if you're feeling fast, you could also just grab them and throw them in. It goes pretty quick. Here are a couple notes on collecting ants. First, make sure they are all from the same colony. Otherwise, if you collect ants from different colonies and mix them, they will fight to the death. This is not what we want. We want our ants to work together to dig some awesome tunnels. Second, I do not recommend getting a queen ant. A queen ant is required to sustain an ant colony long term. However, queen ants can live for decades and produce thousands of new ants. Your glass jar ant farm cannot support this. Just grab a handful of worker ants. They will still dig tunnels without a queen and they should live for a couple weeks or a couple months. On that note, be aware that without a queen to produce new workers, the ant farm will only last for the lifespan of the worker ants. I'm going to keep this right here, next to my terrarium and ecospheres. These have been sealed up for about a year. They receive light and heat energy from the outside, but other than that, they are completely sealed ecosystems. And the terrarium has its own water and air cycle. Here's the terrarium. It has a rock layer for drainage, dirt, plants, now I know there's some isopods in there for sure. It's been interesting to watch. I don't think any of these plants are the same as when I sealed it. Those have died and new ones have grown. It's an interesting cycle. The ecospheres are just dirt and water from a pond. I thought this one was completely dead over the winter, but there's some new stuff going on in there now. I'll tighten this ant farm lid with the good old how-to and reviews wrench to guarantee that no ants get out. Then I can set it with my other jars. That should do it. Now, how to care for the ants. Ants dig in the dark. It's dark underground. 
So I made a simple shade out of black construction paper. Just wrap the black construction paper around the jar and tape it in place. Then cut the top so it's just above the jar. That was a pretty lazy cut. I've got to clean it up a little bit. Now they have a nice dark environment to work in. Ants also need food and water. About once a week you can soak a cotton ball with water and set the cotton ball in the farm. This will provide water. I also put in a little piece of apple for food. Remove the cotton ball and the fruit and replace them with fresh ones about once a week. Checking in on the ants a couple days later, they have some tunnels going. Things are looking good. It'll be fun to check in and see the progress over the next couple weeks. So that wraps up this video. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Drop any comments below and I'll see you in the next video. Oh! <laughs>